If you're dealing with chronic illness, mysterious symptoms and conditions, and you're not quite sure why you're sick, this could be the big reason. So metals like mercury and aluminum and copper and cadmium and lead and arsenic and um, chrome and alloy and steel, you know, those are just some of the metals. I'm sure there's more. But all these metals, they threaten our health because they lower our immune system, yeah. leaving us more vulnerable to any sort of illness that we come up against. And so these metals, mm -hmm. they get in our bodies and then they sink because metals are heavy, they sink and they rust. And when they rust, they oxidate, they create a neurotoxin. And that neurotoxin then gets saturated into our tissues, into fat cells, and uh, that neurotoxin is a food source for any of these pathogens we have going on in our body or any of the pathogens that we come up against on a daily basis. Right, and then that will trigger inflammation in the body. And you might go to the doctor for that and they're not gonna know what the true cause is and just treat you for simply inflammation and not what is really going on. The reason we're talking about metals is because metals they end up in our body and we want to help you guys understand the places that we even pick up these metals so right. today our focus is going to be talking about mercury and the places that we pick up mercury and um, how it might cause harm to the body mm -hmm. So mercury has been around for about 2,500 years. It gets mined and then put into so many consumer products. You will find it in, or at least you used to find it in paint, uh, skincare, cosmetics. You'll find it in LED screens. Um, it's used to make mirrors. It's used to make thermometers. It was used in old uh, appliances. Um, and it's even used in explosives. So mercury, it was used in a lot of on and off switches. So switches to turn on devices, switches to turn on lights. They used to use these in like TVs manufactured before 1991. This was a big thing in the automobile industry. The car industry, they used mercury in their switches. They used it in their on off switches for your lights. They used it in the lights, so they used it in all the uh, the exterior lights, so like your 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 uh, headlights. They used it in the interior lights. They used it in the headliner. They used it in the steering wheel. They used it in the foam that went in the seats. They used it in the carpet. They used it all over the place in in the vehicle. And then on the outside, you've got like the paint right. contains some mercury in it. They okay. used it on the you know, like the, the body of the car. The bumper, even on the dashboard inside the car. So if you, if you or any of your relatives worked in that industry, maybe in a manufacturing facility, you were exposed to all sorts of mercury because you're putting these products together to build a vehicle. Right, and then it gets passed down to generation to generation. And then these cars end up in the junkyard, they get smashed, and then what happens? The mercury gets released into the air and then even kind of goes into the ground. It rains, it's into the soil, it gets into our water system, and boom, there is how you start to get mercury exposure. They even get, they even put mercury in batteries. Not only like your car battery, but <laughs> batteries we use around the house to get our Mm -hmm. uh, electronics going. Right, and you're slightly exposed to that when you're touching them. Um, mercury is found in a lot of tobacco products because tobacco is sprayed with mercury. So you'll find it in cigars, cigarettes, e-cigarettes, um, chewing tobacco. So that's another reason not to smoke. <laughs> and a big one is you'll find it in DDT, which is an old pesticide that they used to spray back in the day on anything and everything. 
It's also in pesticides that you find today that get sprayed on conventional produce. Um, and that just ends up in the soil, ends up in the air. We breathe it, we consume it. Then there's this stuff called uh, caustic soda. And it's, you find it in a lot of um, cleaning supplies, like to clean your oven or like degrease your oven or um, to clear out you know, your drain if you have a clog in your drain. And a lot of that stuff, that contains mercury. Yeah, it's even found in vinyl products. So that even includes vinyl flooring. That is a big thing nowadays that people are installing. Those were just some of the products that we come into contact with. But now we're really gonna get into it. And we're gonna talk about some of the, the stuff we come into contact with almost on a daily basis that contain mercury. Yeah. So mercury is found in oil and gas that goes in our cars, and it's even in airplane vapors. And then all of that gets released into the air, and then we breathe it in. Yeah, and then we talked about lights earlier, and we were talking about like the car industry, but that applies to your, your home lights too. You know, any sort of fluorescent light bulbs or CFLs or HID lights or those neon lights, all those, those lights contain mercury in them. So if the light breaks, you breathe in that mercury, now you're, you're bringing it in. Yeah, and you wanna make sure that you uh, dispose of any fluorescent light bulbs the safe way and bring it into a center where you can recycle it. Don't throw it in the trash because then it gets in the landfill, goes in the soil, and creates exposure to everybody. So one that you might have thought of would be mercury fillings. And if this is something that you're gonna have removed, make sure you're doing one at a time and you're spacing them out months apart because all at once could be a huge overload to the system. So do one at a time and then make sure you're doing um, things to detox the heavy metals from your system. Yeah, and ceramic is the best, right? Yeah, if you're gonna get a filling. Yeah, And then there's um, Mad Hatter you know, like the Mad Hatter disease. I'm sure everybody knows that from Alice in Wonderland. From the, <laughs> the 1800s to... It's like, a real thing. Yeah. From like the 1800s through like the mid-1900s, in hats, they used to use felt. And felt all contained mercury. And people would sweat in their hats, and the mercury would then enter their pores get into their brain and cause this mad hatter disease. People were going crazy. And so if, you know, you're like, I, I, I don't wear felt hats, but past generations in your family might have. It's quite possible. That's a, over 150 years where people wore these hats. And don't try on old hats. Yeah. It's also used as a preservative and an antibacterial agent in a lot of over-the-counter um, items or even pharmaceuticals. So you might find it in antibiotics, um, contact solution, diuretics, um, eye and ear drops, eye ointment, uh, hemorrhoid relief ointment, um, and even medical equipment like thermometers. And then there's thermosol, which is an ingredient that contains mercury. It's used as a preservative, and you'll find that in flu shots and vaccines. So what Anthony says about uh, mercury and how it reacts with viruses is mercury keeps viruses in its hypnotic state. Doesn't kill them, doesn't make them stronger, just keeps them alive in our bodies. And then when you consume the foods that feed, feed viruses in combination with mercury, it allows them to grow, proliferate, and become stronger. So in the early 1800s, mercury was used as an elixir, as a, like a cure-all for all health issues. It didn't matter what age you were, what gender you were, or what symptoms you had. They would give you this thing called Quicksilver to fix all your, your health problems. And then by the 1900s, people caught on and were like, 
uh-uh, we don't want this because anyone that takes it comes home and goes crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this went on for like, I think like 25 years where people were like anti-conventional doctors. They would refuse to go to them and that's when like alternative medicine and herbal medicine, that's where that really started to take off. And eventually conventional medicine caught on and said, okay, we're gonna, we stopped with the Quicksilver and that started to regain trust from a lot of their patients. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to what's going on right now, right? And people always say, you know, Abraham Lincoln, he was depressed and he had depression. Well, why was that? The reason he had depression was he was taking the mercury elixir and then to cure his depression, they were giving him mercury pills. So mercury is a big, ticket item in the mining industry because they use it to extract the gold and silver. And because of this, it's gotten into our waterways, which then is the reason why there is mercury in our tap water. That's not the only reason though. How else does it get in the water? So I don't know if you listen to Anthony's new podcast that he's done, but his very first podcast was about the streaks in the sky. We did a video kind of summarizing it, and it's all about these streaks that we see in the sky, these white streaks, and those streaks, they contain mercury. And the mercury falls, and it ends up in our soil, and then it ends up getting washed into the streams, the rivers, the lakes, the oceans, and then it ends up in our tap water, and it ends up in our water supply, and then we bathe in that water, and um, prior to like the 1960s, they were dumping chemical byproduct into the ocean, into the lakes, into the streams, everywhere. And then it would end up not only in our water supply, but in our bodies. Being absorbed. Yeah. This is a big reason why mercury has contaminated the fish in the water. Unfortunately, the private industries have ruined seafood, and that's why you should just stay away from it because the mercury gets into the seafood, it gets into their tissue and their fat cells, and then you consume it, and then you're getting mercury into your system. So you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, I, I, I haven't been exposed to any of those things you guys just list, listed off. Well, that doesn't necessarily matter because past generations could have been exposed to it. Mm -hmm. That's right. So mercury through the egg, through the sperm, gets passed from generation to generation to generation. So even if you weren't exposed to any of the stuff we listed off, you don't know if past generations were. Right. Yeah. And all of this information we've learned from Anthony William, the medical medium, if you haven't heard of him, check him out. A lot of this mercury information we learned through his first book, The Medical Medium. Check it out. So what we've also learned from Anthony is that mercury is top fuel for viruses, bacteria, and even cancers. And then it's responsible for so many health issues that we're going to list here up on the screen. It's outrageous how many things it causes. And then once it gets really deep into your body and is really saturated in there, it can cause things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, um, dementia, and it can even cause strokes. So mercury is huge. Yeah, and doctors, they can't really test you for mercury. You know, they, they, they have a blood test and they can test mercury in your blood, but you have to be exposed to a lot of mercury at, at, right before that blood test. So then the blood work shows that there's mercury in it. When right. all this mercury gets passed from generation to generation to generation, it's heavy, it sinks, it doesn't even sit in the bloodstream. It sits in all of your organs. It sits in the liver, it sits in the brain, and then gets saturated in these tissues. So. I mean, the, the, the idea that you can pick up mercury in blood work is nearly impossible. So let's talk about how we can protect ourselves and get the mercury out of our bodies, right? We can definitely detox this. What we do is we make and drink a heavy metal detox smoothie 
every single day because we want to get the metals out of our body and we want to maintain that on a daily basis so we'll put the recipe in the description below it's a recipe by the medical medium yeah and there's a bunch of great ingredients in there a lot of which yeah. are, are seaweed and uh, Cruella is another seaweed but it's important to know that Cruella does not remove metals like the ingredients that you see listed in the heavy metal detox smoothie. The Cruella picks up the metals but just drops them and when they drop them then they end up in different places in the body but never removed. So you want to stay away from Cruella. Don't yep. use that as a detoxer at all. So in the morning we started out with lemon water to gently flush the liver and then we do our celery juice following that and what that does is it dislodges the metals from your organs and then following that we do the heavy metal detox smoothie so then the ingredients in that can go do its thing collect the metals and flush it that out of your body so this heavy metal detox smoothie is super important this is why we drink it every single day yeah it is the most powerful tool on this planet to remove heavy metals from the body and we have to remove these these metals because the metals are food for the viruses if we want to eliminate the viruses we got to eliminate the metals and if you want to eliminate the health issues you've got to also eliminate these metals all right, you guys, thanks so much for watching this. We hope you enjoyed this information, and we will see you on the next one. See ya.